So I went from C's at GCSEs to then nearly failing my A-levels and I had to retake my year 12 year in my year 13 year, so I did two years worth of A-levels in one year to then getting a first class law degree and also being awarded the Dean's Award for Academic Excellence for ranking first in my class and now also getting a distinction on the LPC. So you could say, as I've gone through my academic journey, I've improved each step of the way. So I'm gonna tell you today some tips and habits that I implemented across my degree and my masters in order to get high grades every single time. Jumping straight into it, the first one is to make sure you have effective time management. There's multiple ways that you can do this. For example, you can set a timer and make sure that you're doing a 25 minute study session, for example, and then a five minute break afterwards and repeat until you've got everything on your to-do list done. Another one is obviously to create a to-do list itself and set times against each task so then you're going to work towards those tasks because I read a quote recently that time fills the gap that you give for it, if that makes sense. I think I've said that wrong actually, but it's something along those lines. Essentially what that means is if you're allocating seven hours to a task, it's going to take you seven hours to do that task. Whereas if you can actually get it done in three hours and allocate three hours to it, you're going to try and push to work towards a three hour limit. As an example, I was working full time in digital marketing during my degree. So that's nine to five hours every Monday to Friday. That means that I only had evenings in order to work on law degree stuff. So that means I had to be very specific in the time that I was putting into my studies to make sure that I was getting the grades that I want out of it. Essentially, if you're actually allocating the time well and using your time management skills to the best ability throughout your degree or through GCSEs, A-levels, anything like that, you will see the results from it because you're putting the time in it, but just make sure that you're actively putting the time in. The second habit that I put in place in order to get high grades is to follow a set paragraph structure. So I did a dissertation in my final year of my degree, so this was actually last year, and I got a 90 on my dissertation, which for a dissertation is a very high grade. I think for anything really is quite a high grade. And I genuinely put that down to how I structured paragraphs. So my structure that I implemented was the P-E-E-A-L structure. I think I've actually made this up, but I think a lot of people call it the Peel structure. I've just added an extra letter into it. The P stands for point, so what you wanna do is state your point relevant to the question you're being asked. The first E stands for evidence, so you wanna give evidence that backs up the point that you've just said. And then the second E is to explain. So you want to explain exactly what this evidence means as a result of your point. The A stands for analysis, so here you want to critically analyze your point, the evidence, the explanation, and what this actually means, but also adding your own twist to it as well, because examiners love to see your own opinion on things. And then the L stands for linking back to the question, which actually links to my next habit, which is habit number three, which is to always link back to the question. Examiners will want to see a quick roundup of exactly why your paragraph links to that question. So if I say that coffee is the best beverage in the world, I've given my evidence saying that coffee is the best beverage in the world. I've explained why this links to my point and I've also analyzed it with my own opinion. Then I'm gonna finally link back to that question. So I'm gonna say, therefore, X, Y, Z, that is why coffee is the best beverage in the world. My fourth habit, and if you're gonna take anything away from this, if you're doing last minute studying and you're really trying to cram everything in, which I don't advise, but if you're doing that anyway, I cannot stress enough how much past papers will help you. With my university, we were very limited in what actual past papers we got. So we got a specimen exam, which is literally just one past paper for that module. And then also what I did was go back over every single question we did in seminars or workshops, because they're gonna be showing up on the actual exam itself. So treat those questions like an exam question. Implement your exam structure on there, your paragraph structure. Actually go through the questions and be harsh with how you're actually marking them afterwards to see where you can improve. Because at the end of the day, even if you know all of the content, you wanna make sure that you follow a proper essay structure, which is what examiners are gonna to wanna to see. So by utilizing past papers or specimen papers or workshop questions, seminar questions, all things like that, it gives you an idea of exactly how you want to answer it in the exam. And I really do put down the fact that I got high grades to past papers because it kind of gave me an example of exactly how I need to structure my exams and questions in the first place. Number five, and this is for those that are in a little bit of a rut when it comes to their actual studying and they're not wanting to sit down and just read from a book because I can't work like that either, is to get creative with your studying. So if you follow me on Instagram for a while, you'll see that I have implemented a lot of colorful arrays of different notes that I've added to my essential final notes that I've used in exams. But getting creative with your studying makes it a lot more fun to actually do it and you're going to want to do it. So I learned how to write in calligraphy, essentially. 
and I've structured my notes for it to be aesthetically pleasing, I guess. And what this did is basically it made my notes look nice, yes, but also subconsciously you're rereading the content and then putting it back down on paper or on your laptop, however you want to take notes. So you're taking that information in again, rather than just reading it from a book and getting distracted very easily. And that is also called active recall. I'll go into active recall in another video, but this is a method of active recall if you're doing it in a creative way. The sixth habit that I implemented was to find ways to quiz myself. This doesn't have to be with another person quizzing you, for example, although that does help. It does help having someone at university or your partner or your parents quizzing you on exactly what your notes are saying. But you can use systems such as Quizlet, which is free, and you're able to write cards on there. You can create multiple choice questions and literally just do 10 a day on the lead up to the exam. Again, this also links to Active Recall, but I'm not gonna go into that. The seventh habit that I implemented in order to get the high grades is to limit distractions. So I'm talking putting your phone on Do Not Disturb and putting it in another room. Telling your family that you're gonna be studying for the next two hours, so just try not to distract you or actually come in and interrupt your study session. If you can limit the distractions that you have as soon as possible when you're getting in the zone of actually studying, you're gonna have a more effective study session. There are gonna be times where you are gonna be more distracted and that is fine. But if you can limit those distractions to as minimal as possible across your study schedule, say for the week or the month, you're gonna have a better chance of having more effective study sessions. So my eighth and final habit that I implemented in order to get better grades is to reward yourself for each task that you take off. It can be something so little as simply having a five minute phone break after you've finished an essay question. Or what I like to do was reward myself with treats. <laughs> Basically like I'm a dog, but essentially if I got through X task, I will be able to have whatever treat that I wanted. And it's just something to look forward to when you're actually doing your studying as well. You're like, I know once I finish this task, I can eat a Mars bar or a bar of chocolate or something like that. Like I said, it can be as simple as having a five minute phone break, but if you can reward yourself after every single task that you put down, you're gonna be more inclined to finish that task and actually get the reward out of it. So they are essentially my top eight tips and habits that I implemented in order to get a first class degree and a distinction on my LPC slash masters. Of course, if you have any of your own tips, leave them in the comments below so we can all share them with each other and then everyone can do well together. But for now, thank you for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, please like and subscribe because there'll be many more videos like this coming up. And of course, get on with your studying, go and get the high grades, you've got this, don't worry.